Hello everybody and welcome back to Arcade Spirits. I think my voice just cracked a little bit. That's okay. Anyway, when we last left off, we were getting off the bus that we got on at the behest of our magical space phone fairy person. And hopefully we are about to hop into our dream job, whatever that could be. So I hope you guys are ready for this and I will see you in a second. Oh yeah. The bus drops me off, oddly enough, not very far from Juniper's office building. Although my destination isn't nearly as upscale as that. Where does she work? I want to know where she works that she can have pink hair. Comic Sans. Whole story. <laughs> nice. The bus drops me off, oddly enough. Hey, no, 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 no. This is, well, it's a strip mall. Strip malls are relics of 19 whatever. Places 1990. Places where a random assortment of weird little businesses jam as many of themselves into as tight of a space as possible. For instance, I'm seeing a dentist, a used bookstore, an arcade, a fast food drawer, and a boarded up health spa once called Lattes and Enemas, which sounds... Uh, what? What? Oh my gosh. Hey, listen. Hey, listen. Is she going to say that all the time? I think that's two things no human, no human being should ever combine. Hey, listen! No, I mean about your future place of work. Oh shoot, I missed what she said. Hang on, does it have? Oh ho! Oh, <laughs> lattes and enemas. What do you think? I think those two things no human being should ever combine. Okay, nice. I like that they have a, a something where you can go back and double check what's been said. I'm desperately hoping we're not talking we're not talking about the same thing. Which one of these businesses exactly am I working at? I don't know anything about her oral hygiene or old books, and I'd rather not be a fry cook. The one in the middle, silly! What, behind the arcade? It is the arcade! Huh. Trust me on this. I referenced and cross referenced and cross cross referenced your personality details, personal history, and social media connections. This is your dream job. My dream job, really. 99.97%. Okay. I should probably explain my confusion. Arcades are big business in the entertainment sector. Pro gamers are celebs. Five-star arcades are social hotspots. It's always been popular with the mainstream. But, well, restaurants are popular too, right? And for everybody who opens one hoping to be the next Iron Chef, a dozen more shut down in failure. Arcade competition is fierce. Paydays range from peanuts to gold, and sure, those who make it can secure fame and fortune, but those who don't, well, no wonder Iris sees this as a dream job. Video games weren't always popular, though. I read an interesting article about it once. Back in the year 1985? We narrowly avoided a ser maybe 86, a serious industry crash, which would have left video games as a kid's toy fad, like hula hoops, no mainstream acceptance, which is what happened in our darker timeline. Dun dun dun! For instance, one factor could have been a terrible game based on a kid's movie about a cute alien visitor who wanted a phone home. If this game was a complete poop butts, like poop from a butt, yeah, okay, and overproduced and undersold, it ruined video games for years. Fortunately, cooler heads prevailed, that game was delayed until it could be developed properly, and the crash was averted. The crash still only exists in theory. Now, I like the I like the alternative history thing. Um the gaming crash was good, you say, Rain, because people produced a ton of crap, and there were no regulations, people made a lot of bootlegs. Yeah, I guess. Maybe it just, it just maybe the maybe the, uh, the crash was good and that it made it so that we had like a hard reset. Sometimes I wonder what it'd be like for, pe for people in the darkest timeline where everything went wrong. Are gamers considered nerds and outcasts? Are arcades vanishing points of nostalgia? The mind boggles. But make no mistake, as popular as they are, the arcade industry is a dodgy, risky prospect for a job. Plenty make a run at it, only to come up short. Considering Iris was tasked with getting me a job I, I'd enjoy and could keep for more than a few months, this left me a bit confused. Iris! Oh no, I, 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 I wish the outlines were different colors. I feel like Iris is supposed to be outlined in pink and I should be like outlined in blue or something. Iris, this isn't me saying no, it's an interesting prospect, but, I mean, are you sure about this? You say you're 99% sure. 99.97. Uh, 99 
Won't this be like my lifeguard job, though? Satisfying, but short-lived. This arcade doesn't exactly look like a five-star. It's no Deco's Palace, that's for sure. And to be perfectly honest, I haven't set foot inside an arcade in a... Dun, dun, dun. Flashback. 15 years. Huh. I remember really enjoying arcades when I was a kid. I wonder why I stopped going to them. Iris interrupts that thought, eager to show off her homework. My sources say Trust this. me, when I say I was 99.97% sure, I meant it. That's not some arbitrary number. I'm designed to be a bit silly and whimsical, but my math is deadly serious. My coders may be to be the warm, personable front of a database array that's currently laser targeted on, targeted on getting you exactly what you need right here, right now. And when this place inevitably, inevitably, I wish I could talk, inevitably collapses and I lose my dream job, what makes you think that's going to happen? Because it does. It always does. I don't think your database accounts for my family curse. We've always had to, I don't know, compromise, settle, because things rarely work out. I might cry. If this game makes me cry, I'll be very upset. But like, wow, is this, this is a little bit real. You always have to be ready for the worst. That's why I take things in stride these days. Does that mean you shouldn't even try? I open my mouth to protest and then close it. As often as my life tends to crumble out from under me. It's not like she was wrong. I still have to try. We're cynical? We are. And besides, what is my dream anyway? That's what I was asking myself when I left the house this morning. I don't know what I want from life. I've been coasting aimlessly for years. When things started running downhill for my family, I had to grow up fast. Put aside silliness like wanting to be an astronaut and take what I could get. Now, thanks to Iris, I got a shot at taking something a little better than what I usually get. I owe it to myself to try and be happy and paid, not just paid. Wow! I'm actually maybe gonna cry. Like, I keep kind of, like, almost tearing up. Like, this is what a lot of millennials need to hear. And, like, I wish the market worked in that way. That, like, we owe it to ourselves to try to be happy and paid. Like, who said, like, life has to be a terrible thing? And then you die. Like, none of us are gonna retire anyway. We're gonna work till we die. Because we don't have retirement funds. Like, you know? You might as well enjoy it, too. You don't have to hate it. I don't know. People don't seem to understand sometimes that, like, you don't have to hate your job to be successful. So I opted to push on through those doors and see what waited for me on the other side. There's going to be a bunch of beautiful people waiting for us on the other side. This is what's going to happen. The air conditioning hits me like a cool breeze, albeit one smelling of copper and corn chips. As it's early in the morning on, on, a, on a weekday, it's not too packed with gamers. Although it's so packed with games, I'd probably have a hard time finding anyone anyway. At once, I'm struck by something odd. I actually recognize most of these games. Neat! Considering I haven't walked into an arcade in over a decade, that's probably not great. Lots of vintage stuff here from the looks of it, like, really old. Prediction, enter love interest number one. Follow your passion, but also not everyone has... Exactly, but I wish we could live in a society where, like, everybody could kind of be what they want to be, you know? Like, or, like, at least be able to afford the schooling for it? Like, I don't know. That would be nice. Mm, really old. Although I don't recognize that game with the stage lights and things. Maybe it's karaoke or dancing. A Japanese import? My sources say yes. Checking. That would be Showtime Stage, a collaboration of Nihana Heavy Industry Concern and Hubris Records in Germany. It's won a lot of awards. Huh. I recognize most of these. Whoa, is that seriously a Mr. Moopy's Magical Maze? But the one in the middle with the split screens is new to me. Fist of Discomfort, a hybrid real-time strategy and brawler beat-em-up. It's actually not that new. It's been a staple of the esports team for the last eight years. Two genres I was utterly lousy at last time I checked. And over here is an old lady. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Some of you are like, enter romance number one. Here she is. Here's our first romance option. Um, sorry, ma'am. I was just talking to myself and had an overwhelming urge to complete my sentences. <laughs> Thankfully, I don't think she even registered me calling her old. She looks up from her knitting, seated behind the ticket prize redemption desk, and offers a wrinkly smile. I love her clothes. Like, hang on a second. This is very patchwork. Like, it, the, the, like, vesty thing is, like, two different materials. It reminds you of that Odyssey romance? Yep, that was a good one. That was funny. Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, oh, hello boy. there. Always nice to meet someone new in the funny <laughs> place. Are, they, are we British? 
Like, is everybody British? The what? Francine's arcade fun plex. Didn't you see the sign? She got a little Pac-Man earring with like the little cherries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Funky jewelry. Well, I chose to knock off the first two words when they got knocked off the building during the storm of 19. <laughs> now it's just the fun plex, I suppose. So, how can I help you, dear? Um. <laughs> This is the one that could be risky, but we'll see. A gin in my phone set up a job interview for me. <laughs> a magical space fairy or something that lives in my phone told me to come here and find my dream job. <laughs> that's a that's a surefire way to, to start off the interview. Hello! I'm a magical space fairy, apparently. I half expected her to send me packing. Pretty impulsive of me to just talk about Iris like that, but she took it in stride. My, my. Oh, hello, my, my. What they can do with technology these days. I really do marvel at what amazing things young people have here in 20. Beep. Although I'd simply love to take a sledgehammer to those blasted video game consoles that eat at my bottom line. That's so we do have video game consoles, not just arcades. She said, with such, a, with, such, with such a kind, hearted, and warm smile. Please, call me Francine. <laughs> As in, Francine's art <laughs> <and> complex. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, thinking about it, I suppose we were originally Frederick's arcade funplex, named after my dear. How do you make an old-sounding voice? You get it? Get it? Sadly, he died in bed some years ago. Ah, I'm sorry to hear that. No, oh, don't be. He died <laughs> doing what he loved. Ah. Having intense ah. physical relations with me. Ah. Ah. Oh my gosh, lady. Lady, calm down. That's information I needed to know. Yes, yes. A and you are? Airy cater, ma'am. Very well. Shall we retire to the office to conduct your interview? I carry on out here, but it's rather noisy, isn't it? Yeah, about that. How do you deal with the constant noise, anyway? Oh, eventually, you just sort of learn how to filter out all the beeps and boops. It can take weeks to become acclimated, but I found in the end... It really is the Odyssey lady, yep. This old lady is hilarious. This is, this is Le you know, this is definitely Lemon Z. There's no Cassandra. You're right, exactly. That's exactly what happened, Rain. Cassandra wasn't able to swoop in and save the husband from, like, a very intense physical relationship that probably would have killed him. Done. She quirks an eyebrow. Wow, okay. As I was saying, it takes a while to become used to it. And then it's like, just kidding, I've tuned it all out, but I liked the noise. Why? Come back, noise. Well, now, that's faster than the others. Not bad. So, shall we see what you're made of, hmm? This way, please. Francine leads me down. Penguin there, baby! <laughs> <laughs> That's so cute! Francine leads me down a back hallway, past public restrooms, and into an employees-only door. It takes all of my restraint to not point out the extraneous apostrophe! <laughs> Welcome to our little backstage oasis. I'd suggest we do this in Kevin's office, but it's a bit uh, too untidy. I don't blame the boy. He's been so overworked lately. Please, have a seat, and we'll begin. As quirky as this place is, and its owner it might be, at least I'm confident that I can nail the interview portion of the proceedings. I've interviewed for a dozen jobs and held down three. I know all the standard questions. What are your greatest strengths? What do you see as your weaknesses? Once I even describe how to assemble a Lego set to prove my communication skills. Wow. Considering I ended up washing dishes, I'm not sure why, but the point is I'm confident, prepared, ready. If you were a dinosaur, yep. what dinosaur yep, would you be? Yep, we're not going to have the normal questions here. Gavin, this Gavin's definitely gonna be my man's option. Of course he is. What? <laughs> I love that. What? If you were a dinosaur, what dinosaur would, would you be? be? 
Right, okay, maybe this wouldn't be a typical job interview after all. No problem, go with the flow, let's do this. Uh, pterodactyl soaring through the sky. I've always wanted to be a bird, so... Wait, no, all dinosaurs are basically birds. Let me rephrase. I've always wanted to be a flying bird, so pterodactyl. Sweeping around, catching up drafts, staying way away from meat eaters. Really? How exciting! What's your favorite Me favorite snack? snake. Actually, legitimately, my favorite dinosaur was, was the, uh... The, the scary ocean ones. What was... Out? No, no, no. Shoot. The one that looked like a Loch Ness monster, and then the one that looked like a giant crocodile. Oh no, she definitely has earrings shaped like Pac-Man and the Pac-Man cherries. Favorite snack? Uh, snack? If this was a favorite food question, I have this down easy. It's tacos. Always tacos, but snacks. Hmm. When you have pizza. Oh on my a gosh, no. Hush, you. Come now, dear. I don't have all day. After giving it a good thought, well, how could I forget my favorite snack? Hmm, tacos. Uh, um, I guess between all of these, a tasty apple with almond butter is my favorite. An apple a day keeps the doctor away. If I'm hungry, I need something that's got enough nutrients and protein to carry me through the rest of the day. That's good. You know how to plan accordingly for any situation. You know what they say, you are what you eat. Next question. Nothing had I prepared for has helped me plan this odd interview. I brace myself for the next one. What assets can you bring to the team during the inevitable zombie Perfect apocalypse? question! Those are all bad. Yeah, I would have said like, I don't know, cheeses or something. This interview, is this interview for real or is this a dream? As I look into Francie's deadpan expression, I know she's a hun- This is not deadpan. I know she's 130% serious. Hmm. <laughs> to be honest, I would probably get eaten on day one. I mean, I mean, let's be real. I'd probably be eaten on day one. I wouldn't be engineering or medical. I don't know what I'd be. I'd be useless. I could, like, I'm a survivor, maybe. Um, let's just, let's be honest. I'd probably get eaten day one. I wouldn't be m of much help in the inevitable zombie apocalypse. At least I can throw myself into a horde of undead and all you, you can all escape to live another day. Well, at least you're honest, and honesty is the best way to form trust. I know, right? I use my archaeology skills to do what, you know? One more thing. I contribute archaeology. Yeah, I, yeah. Why are you here? A, a jinn told me to. The question is so simple and almost actually relevant to career planning that takes me off guard. I told you, the magical space fairy in my phone sent me here to find a job. You're seeking a job, true. But that doesn't really answer my question. She's like it? a magical godmother. No doubt. You think my interview questions are a bit silly, mm -hmm. but I like to think of the Funplex as more than a collection of tasks and people to perform those tasks. Most folks my age opening arcades at that time saw it as just another way to make a quick buck. Yes. Well, I saw it as something else. Something more than a way to make a large pile of <laughs> Look at her face. Hello, official. How's it going? Welcome, welcome. And I expect you'll find the others working here see it as something more, too. Everyone has a dream they're chasing, dearie. And for my friends, it lies within the funplex. Now, if all you want is a paycheck, I can provide that. But the last fellow in your position, that's all he wanted. And he didn't last. He died. Long. He's in the vending machine. So I ask you again. Why hope are you here? To be honest, I didn't have a better answer than the vague hope the ep that maybe this time I wouldn't lose everything. But that's just enough motivation to face each day. No more than that. It wouldn't be enough to answer her question. I needed to actually think this through. It's a fun plex, a plex of fun. Uh, to be honest, I don't know. Not yet. I'm looking for hope. 
Uh, I haven't had much lately. If I don't dare to take risks, I'll be stuck. He's in the bathtub with no kidneys? It's exactly where he is. Hmm. I'm looking for hope. I haven't had much lately. I understand I'm not whining or looking for pity, but my life has been a complete mess for over a decade. In and out of jobs, taking what I can get, settling, compromising. I gave up on hoping for something better a long time ago. But, well, the people in my life who are close to me keep encouraging me to try and chase my dreams. That's why I'm here. I'm looking for the answer to your question. But I won't be daydreaming all the time, I promise. In my last job, I was a lifeguard. That takes a lot of focus. I'll be just as attentive in helping your, uh, funplex. That perks her attention. Oh my, a rather serious occupation, that. And an unusual step from such a troubled waters to, to a land of make-believe. You enjoyed this role as a lifeguard, I take it? Yes, ma'am. My roommate says she often noticed me smiling after coming home from work. Which makes Francine smile in turn. I can't say I offer a role with such high stakes, but you'd be surprised at the many ways one can save a life, even here. Very well. I'm satisfied. Let's get you to work. I got a job! I breathe easier at that. Probably the weirdest job interview I've ever had, to be sure. And yet, it felt appropriate. Like it was, uh, it, like it was about far more than just filling a slot on the payroll. Yeah, because you feel useful in this sort of a job, you know? Like, I don't know. You don't want to just be a cog in the machine. Francine leads me back to the arcade floor to introduce me to my duties. Ew, rain, gross. It only occurs to me now that I forgot... Now that I forgot to ask exactly what duties this mystery job I'd accepted really involved. I didn't get to change my outfit either. I'm sad. Francine gestures to the seat she was occupying previously, a stool behind the prize desk. Oh, how marvelous. Oh, how marvelous. Welcome to your new position, Ari. Sitting here, you mean? Sitting here, helping players redeem tickets for valuable prizes. I glance at the wide array of pencil toppers, rubber spiders, and tiny plastic toy cars on display. Well, for prizes at any rate. It's such a relief. I've really been stretching myself thin lately, trying to fill in since the position was vacated. If you don't mind me asking, ma'am, why did the last guy who sat here end up quitting? Something about being so bored out of his mind that he felt like jamming one of those 500 ticket plush dolls down someone's throat. Oh, yucky. Oh, such a shame. <laughs> Poor dear, he just wasn't cut out for this line of work. Grandson or no, I have no patience for such nonsense. Oh ho, grandson. I'm sorry, the last person to work this desk was your grandson? Anyway, Kevin should be by soon. He'll handle the paperwork and all that administrative nonsense. Now, if you don't mind, all this talking's tired me out some. I'll be in the back office if you need me. Okay then, look at me! I'm so cute! I adjusted my seating on the semi-comfortable stool, leaning against the desk beneath me. A wide array of cheap junk awaited my attention. I could have lost hope then and then this job would be slight, even slightly more engaging than being a diner dishwasher, but chose to look on the positive side. I'd be helping kids obtain toys that would become nostalgic memories for years to come. Uh-huh. Right? <laughs> no. Unless it's one of the plushies. You probably keep a plushie. Do we get to date the grandson? We haven't even we haven't even met anybody yet. Any minute now. I'm absolutely terrifying with that smile. Okay, there we go. Dot dot dot. Uh, where is she? I crave the sweet embrace of death. I I chose you can choose at the beginning if you want to be he, she, or they, and I chose she. But I like this hairstyle. I already have my hands full of the mature lady. I don't need anybody else, I guess. <laughs> I've been sitting here for two hours now and nobody's walked up to obtain a novelty funplex shot glass or a colored pencil set or a light up yo-yo. Lunchtime is approaching and so far the only people walking in and out of the arcade are a few stray adults who have no interest in cheap friendship bracelets. Thankfully, my first customer arrives. Nope, this is definitely Gavin. My first customer of the day arrives before I could start wondering if one of those 500, 500 ticket plushies could really fit down someone's throat. Or maybe not. Nope, just walking right on by me. His head buried in reading of some sort of spreadsheet. Re in reading some sort of spreadsheet off his tablet. Was he here to play? Doesn't seem like the typical businessman on a break or unwashed and unemployed game aficionado. In fact... Um... Dang, he's hot. He's a snappy dresser. Seems a cool dude. 
Most guys I know are, are content to toss on a t-shirt and jeans. Not this guy, even in an arcade, he's sharp like a linoleum like a linoleum knife. In fact, that rather pointed look he's offering me after doubling back is rather than a linoleum knifey too. What? What did I do to you? Ha ha! Hold on, oh, oh hey, oh shoot, he doesn't have a voice yet. Hold on a minute, who are you exactly? What are you doing behind that desk? Where's Francine? Uh, I am Francine. I had some work done. Uh, uh, <laughs> that one sounds kind of funny. Or not funny. You're right. I was still wearing my, uh, my hoodie and jeans. I didn't change my outfit. Hmm. I feel like this guy is not the kind of guy you crack jokes with, but I'm gonna I'm gonna try. I am Francine. I had some work done. Why well, I am Francine, dear? The wonders of plastic surgery. <laughs> he doesn't like not. it. Kidding, kidding. I'm Ari. She hired me to work the desk. I'm her grandson's replacement. He doesn't look pleased with me jerking him around like that, but nods in satisfaction anyway. Good to hear. Oh dang it! I missed it. Good to hear. It's about time. I was wondering how long she'd have to work the desk. She's got gusto for an octogenarian and loves working the floor, but sitting here all day handing out toys and dealing with problems wears her down. So, she explained the job to you? Give you the papers to sign? She said Gavin would handle that stuff. With a sigh, he rubs his forehead, feeling a headache coming on. <laughs> <sighs> that would be me. I'm Gavin Cooper. I'm the business manager here at the Funplex. I make sure we manage to keep having a business rather than a pile of rapidly collapsing fiscal mistakes. I love he's got the little like icon on his jacket. We're his manic pixie dream girl. I am nobody's manic pixie dream girl. I wear a baggy hoodie and jeans. Right, so as you've no doubt guessed, you'll be exchanging tickets for prizes, but that's the least part of your job. There's more to it than that. You're the floor attendant. You attend the floor. What, the carpets? Seriously? The floor, the arcade, the games, the patrons. You're the one running around, putting out fires, and sorting out problems. I don't really know. I, can, I don't know if I can get a voice for this guy. Technically, you're our second floor attendant. Ashley will be in later, but we need two. One to roam, one to operate the desk. You're in. I do it myself, but I'm typically busy in the back office, making sure the whole thing doesn't fall into bankruptcy. That's why Francine loved filling in. She's a people person. She loves helping out in a pinch. We're his depressed goblin. <laughs> oh my gosh, we are. Wait, oh, yeah, okay, she's a people person. That's not to say you're alone out here. I'm in your corner, at least. If things go south, you tap me for advice on what to do. You got a phone? Of course. Gavin quickly passes me his business card. He apparently had a stack of them at the ready in his pocket. Go figure. His phone number is listed at the bottom. Bottle, 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 bottom. I need to smoke a pack. No, he doesn't. He doesn't. The thing is, he, he doesn't have a super deep voice. It's pretty mellow. You ever worked a high-pressure customer service job before? Shoe sales. Smelly socks. You have no idea. Right, well, you know how to keep your head when a customer doesn't, I hope. But anything goes sideways, you text me. I'm not around, you text Ashley or Naomi. In that order. Who and who? You'll meet them soon enough. I think Above not. all, do not bug Francine. She's practically retired. Let her enjoy that retirement in peace. Comprendo? Uh, relax, I got this. Stress feeds me, makes me strong. I eat stress and crap solutions. Don't worry. I can manage the floor while you manage the business just fine. Doubtful. Doubtful. That remains to be seen. The last guy sitting on that stool was a slacker and an idiot. And even though he was family, Francine dropped him like a bad habit. If you stay clear and honest with me, do your work, do it well, we'll get along Kay. swimming. I have enough problems keeping this magical arc of hopes and wishes afloat. Please, don't add to my problem. Okay. Magical arc of what now? Gavin sighs again, a stress release gesture, but his expression softens somewhat afterwards. I take it Francine told you her theory, that this is more than just a job, more than just an arcade. That's my understanding. Hi, Ida, welcome. <sighs> I'm not into dressing up words. I like to speak plain. 
If I'm Kurt, then that's because optimization is a factor of my job. Okay. Everybody working here wants to work here. This is where they belong, for one reason or another. Me, I love chaos. I love wrangling. Then why didn't you stuff. like my jokes, man? The arcade industry is high risk, high reward. I manage that risk so that they can also find happiness in their lives. Everybody in this business has a dream they're chasing. It's a fragile thing, prone to getting crushed by Yeah, I feel that. My job is to see to it that never happens. That includes Francine, who deserves better in her twilight years than desperately propping up a semi-failing business. I thought the arcades were supposed to be doing well. Come on, come on. So, you find some value in this place beyond your salary, and you'll burn out. Trust me. Last guy to sit there burned out Okay. Hard. Now, can I trust you to mess with our merry- He's mistress? got a rip in his pants! That's not very, that's not very suave. Um, I'm still trying to figure out my why. And to be honest, I'm still sorting out why I'm here, what my dream is. But I'm not here to step on anyone else's dreams in the process. I'm here to do my best at supporting everyone. Oh, I got a plus one with Gavin! Yay! Whatever that means! Good to hear. I'd say we share similar views then. It'll be a pleasure to work with someone who's actually enthusiastic and competent. Oh, and hopefully this hive of weirdness will help you find your dreams along the way. Um... Anyway, I need to go prepare your paperwork. Technically, you shouldn't be working until we've crossed the I's and dotted the T's, but... But, since I'm already sitting here, you'd rather I stick around? That would be accurate. If you're willing to fudge things a bit and work today anyway, it'd help us out a lot. Now, if you don't mind, Naomi could likely likely could use a hand in the workshop as good an opportunity to in introduce yourself as well. Got it. Wait, someone else is here? I haven't seen any anyone else. Yeah, that sounds like Naomi. Her workshop's through the door there. The one next to the UFO catcher. The crane game, to use layman's terms. Satisfied for now, Gavin heads in the back, presumably to the office to go crunch some numbers. If Francine's really taking a nap back there, hopefully he's going to crunch quietly. My first coworker ended up decidedly less cool of a guy than I thought he'd be. Well, I thought he was cool. But he's not a total jerk, definitely. I've known really blunt people before. It's easy to mistake them for jerks, especially at first glance. I decided to give this guy an honest chance for now. Anyway, that's pretty generous. Anyway, I should go meet my next coworker, this Naomi that he mentioned. Although I could swear Francine and I were the only ones here until now. <laughs> 